there have been a lot of changes with NetGate PF Sense recently, and I thought I'd just go through it and install and, and see what's changed. So we're going to take a quick look at this. It's been well documented what NetGate have done. They've taken away the Home Lab option, which is a shame because I'm still running PFSense Plus on my firewall. But there were some changes made to the ISO, and I just wanted to go through it and, and see what it's like these days. So we're going to jump into it and see what it's like. I've downloaded it. I downloaded it from um, pfsense.org and I downloaded the DVD image. Set up a VM with two NICs, one to the outside world and one to, well, just the inside. So let's start it up and see how it goes. So as you can see, here's my um, Hyper-V VM. Let's get it started. Okay, let's maximize that. And here we are with the installer, version 1.0-RC. I wonder what the advanced options are. Interesting. Okay, so let's install it. So that's my WAN interface, HN0. HM1 as the LAN. Yep, we'll go with all those defaults. They look reasonable to me. Yeah, it is. It's a departure because th this is not how I remember it being. And, and this is quite nice because it's more in line with FreeBSD's installer. I like that. But before it was just all on a black screen all on a console so i quite like this nice and simple interesting that you have to have an internet connection to install this now correct it doesn't we'll go with ce file system zfs recommended partition scheme gpt Oh. That's interesting. All right, okay. Uh, stripe, no redundancy, DA0. And let's install that. Gives you a choice of versions. Yeah. So one of the biggest changes was that they put it all onto one DVD. So there is CE and Plus on this DVD. And there's also 272 and 270, which is quite interesting. So we'll go with 272 as it's the latest. I'm going to try and keep this to real time if I can. I'm not sure how long it's going to take. I guess it depends on how quick the PF Sense mirrors are. We shall see. Might take a while. Fifty packages. Eighty. One fifty. One six nine. Now it's just installing them.
And there we go. What's that taken? A couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And reboot. Here we go. That's more like PF Sense. HN0 for WAN. It's interesting that it's asking me to do this again, even though I just did it before. But, you know, that is what it is. And there we are. Very good. Now this might be interesting. I may not be able to get to that LAN interface. I might have to change it. We'll give it a go to what happens. Let's minimize that. We're on name 2.168.1.1. See what happens. I don't think that's going to work. So I may have to just adjust the IP address. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay. So let's change that from that to that. Go back to the console. Okay, right. Set interface IP addresses. Okay, so two for LAN. DHCP, yes. Yes. No. Hopefully that'll bring it up. Might have to restart it though. We'll see in a sec. There we go. That's better. So 85. Okay, let's try that. Well, there we go. PFSense and we're in. Default password on PFSense new installs is admin and PFSense all lowercase. And you get the setup wizard. Let's do that first. Actually, let's not do that. Let's go next. Next. Yep, 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 yep. Some basic DNS information. Yeah, we're in London, sort of. Configure the WAN interface. Configure the LAN interface. Let's change that to 23 and we'll change the admin password, reload the config and we should be in. Quick check for updates. Let's finish that. Now we'll go to the accept of the uh, terms and conditions and there we are. Let's do a update check. I'm going to assume that there isn't any. No interface is configured with an IPv, uh, IPv4 because it sets DHCP. Now. If I wanted that, I would do that. However, I'm not going to because this is just a test. I just wanted to see what was going on. So it's checking updates, current release, yeah. Now, one thing that I find quite interesting about PFSense CE, and that's that you don't get boot environments. Now, I was quite adamant to my father that you can still use boot environments on CE. So let's take a look. It is there. So this be CTL list. Yeah, so you can do it. You just have to do it from the command line. It's not in the in the GUI. Well, that's good. It's using 14 current, which is quite old now. I mean, we're on 14.1 release, aren't we? That's, um, yeah, 14.1. Current would be 15 now, I believe. Yeah, so that's quite interesting. No, I didn't think it would be. Okay, so be CTL, uh, create pre-update there we go two snapshots there are two boot environments get it right in a minute so log out doesn't really log you out these days it just sort of sits there so let's see if we can get into 148.86.85 you said what now ah uh, it's got to be enabled isn't it in it be with him Yeah. 
Bien, espera. Interesting that I can still do this. It does make it feel more like FreeBSD than a firewall, which is good. There we go. Upgrade done. Update. I should do the same sort of thing. Excellent. Excellent. So yeah, so PFSense CE has changed a bit. If you use the DVD image, if you still use the Memstick image, it's the same as it was before. Interesting. It is slightly strange that you have to set it up twice. I'm sure there's a reason for it. I can't really think of it myself, but I'm sure there is one. But yeah, there you go. It works. Works well, I guess. All looks the same to me. So a little bit of an extra step there, but you know, it is what it is. Don't forget to um, do the share, like, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff. And tell me what your thoughts are on the, the withdrawal of um, Home Lab license, because that was just great. Loved it. I don't particularly want to move from PFSense to OpenSense, which is a viable option, of course, but it's really not what I want to do. Hopefully they'll change their mind in the future. So I'm going to skedaddle. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.